Greetings, friends. This is uh, Cal Preach. Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. I've been thinking about the uh, Old Testament. And you know how I told you I have trouble with the Old Testament. Like the Old Testament just seems so overwhelming to me. But I've been reading it. I've been doing this um, 400-day plan on this Bible app that I have. And it's been great. I've been really enjoying it. Um, and somebody pointed out to me that the Old Testament is like black velvet and the New Testament is like a diamond. And when you place the diamond against the black velvet, the diamond shines and shimmers and glistens and it, it is at its most beautiful against the black velvet. And you know how the Old Testament is, you know, it's got a lot of darkness in there, a lot of wrath. It's got some stories that are pretty intense. But then you have, you know, the New Testament, which is filled with hope and light and um, the resurrection, the birth of Christ, um, backwards, reverse, uh, not exactly in that order. Pokey, she's busy. She's doing a job. And, um, yeah, oh, I got to pick that one up. That is not okay. Sorry, guys. I know. I know. I torture you with this. I got to put you down. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, yeah. So, anyways, you place the diamond against the black velvet, and it shimmers and it shines. And um, that's the New Testament. The New Testament is like a diamond. I just love that analogy because... Um, Without the black velvet, the diamond doesn't shine its brightest. So that's why I need to know about the Old Testament because my faith will not shine its brightest if I don't know those stories, if I don't know that truth, if I don't understand and grasp those teachings and... Hey, Billy, can I put you on my show? Do you mind if I film you? If I film you? Film here? Yeah. Oh. This is my show, California Preaching. Oh. Yeah. That's You're so, look at you in your merbs, honey. Did you see the Santa? Santa? Is there a Santa back there? Yeah, that's, that's Santa. Santa Claus? And I thought Leo would enjoy it more than I would. Yeah. You know, I heard something kind of scary the other day. Do you want to know what happened? Well, you know how Santa sort of hijacked Christmas a little bit because... You know, it's about Jesus, yeah. but Santa Claus kind of oh. hijacked Christmas a little bit. Oh. Don't you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, he kind of did, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> if you scramble, this is, uh, not to freak you out, but this was so weird. Somebody said to me, if you scramble the words Santa, what word can you make? Yeah, not a good word. I don't know if you figured that one out yet, but uh, it, it's just... Scramble Santa. Uh, say backwards, no. Forwards, no. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you because it'll bum you out. It'll bum you out. So this is called Laramar, Billy. You like it? You guys, you know what's so cool? Billy's middle name is Edward. Guess what my Billy's middle name is? Edward. He's our neighbor. You're our neighbor, aren't you? Yeah, uh, two doors down. Two doors down. Turn your radio down so my people can hear you, please. There you go. Yeah. Oh, uh, two doors down at twenty-eight ninety-nine. Yes. It, it, it's a, uh, a, a Persian Gulf architecture. Hold on. I don't want my dog to get hit by a car. Sorry. Come on, Pokey. Come on. Sorry, peace of Christ. Sorry, Billy. Sorry to interrupt you. What were you saying? Uh, I just said it's, it's uh, only a little dog running. Wait a second. That's my kitty. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's Hendrix. Oh. Come on, Henny. Well, Come on. You know, that's Jimi Hendrix. Oh, no. <laughs> Remember no. Jimi Hendrix, the guitar player? No, I don't. From the 60s, no? No. Jimi Hendrix? 
No, doesn't ring a bell. No, I'm, I'm a jazz man. You're j yeah. <laughs> How much do we love Billy? And still dancing. And you're still dancing? Yeah, uh, uh, at the James Joyce on Saturday night at 7.30. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You look great. You're so handsome. Oh, gosh. Oh, well, nobody's ever told me that. Come on, stop. No. You've never heard that you're handsome. No, never heard that. Well, no. you're very, very handsome, and Jesus loves you. Oh, well, I, I, oh, gosh. I, hi, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Jesus does love you. This whole show is about the Lord. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, the Lord, I live by what the Lord says. You do? Well, yes, because I was placed on this earth for one reason, and that is to help other people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that's what I try to do every day. Have you accept, accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Oh, gosh, I think since, so. Uh, yeah. I since think you were so. a little kid? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I used to go to a catechism class, and then after that, to church. And then, uh, yeah, so that's it. And then when I was uh, in the service, I uh, painted the outside of the whole church. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Amazing. Well, yeah. I love that you were on my channel today. Thank you for blessing us and have a beautiful day. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had a good, uh, uh, but I'm not going to order it again. We ordered turkey and all that, you know, mashed potatoes, peas, the works. And so then I thought the leftovers would be good. The leftovers are terrible. <laughs> so next year it's going to be something like a lasagna dish. There you go. <laughs> Stick with lasagna. Yeah. Well, you were so sweet when we moved into our house. You brought us tools and food. You brought us so many sweet things. It was so kind of you. Did you get your tools back? Yes. And I, and I good. Some place now I can't find them. <laughs> oh, no. Now they're lost again? Yeah. Well, well they're in the garage someplace, but I can't find them. All right. Yeah. So that's a pretty look. Yeah, it's called Larimar. Oh. And it's very, very beautiful. And you get it in the Dominican Republic. Anyways, I got to run. But yeah. God bless you, Billy. Okay. Well, thank you. I need a little help in that department. Yeah. But now, when you go by, take a look at uh, Santa. Santa. Yeah. I'm going to look at Santa. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Billy. Okay. So long. God bless you. Peace of Christ. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Now, Santa goes everything to school. Yeah. Oh, really? Hold on, Pokey. I gotta grab my holy notes. Oh my goodness. Okay, how cute. Bye. You know that uh, Eric Baldwin's name was in the paper the other day. Oh really? Yeah, in the Oh, Eric Baldwin. That's weird. Bye. Anyway, um, I've still got this poop in my hand. Oh my gosh. Oh, got a little distracted there. Anyways, Billy is a sweetheart. He's our neighbor. Um, yeah, I love elderly people. They're so loving. They're so, so kind. And all they want is a little bit of, you know, attention, someone to talk to and tell stories to and make you laugh. I mean, they're so funny and full of wisdom. Oh my goodness. I just feel like us as Americans have just failed the um, elderly community. But that's a whole nother California preach. That's a whole nother California preach. Um, so I was thinking about, um, my holy notes here. Oh my gosh. I've been resting in Jesus, just resting in Jesus. And guess what? I'm getting more done than I've ever gotten done just by resting. Hi, my dog is going through menopause. I'm very sorry. You probably don't want to be on my YouTube channel, so I won't turn my camera around, but, uh, God bless you in peace of Christ. When I rest in Jesus, I get more done. You go figure, go figure. How is that possible? When I pray, meditate, read the word, relax, just rest and bask in his, in his love, I just get so much more done. And I'm starting to crack open the love Jesus has for me, you guys. I'm just starting to crack it open slowly but surely. I'm starting to feel the love that Jesus has for me. I was talking to my friend Clarissa this morning and I just burst into tears and we were praying and I said, Lord, just crack that open because if I'm in a dark closet and I open that little door, I open just to crack, what happens? The whole closet gets filled with light, right? So I just feel like if the Lord can crack my heart, just even just a little bit, 
all start to feel the eternal, unbreakable, unchangeable, unstoppable love of God. And I just, I just pray that he'll continue to do that for me because, you know, with, I mean, you know, my abandonment issues and everything that I've shared about and, you know, not really having the love of a father here on earth. Um, this has been a big, a big obstacle for me, believing that Jesus loves me, believing that there's a God that's looking after me and loving me. So I'm just resting in God and trying to take more time to just rest in his, in his beauty and in his, uh, you know, ever present, like, magnificence. It's just like this, this, this excellent perfection. Just rest in that. Find time to just be still and know that I am God. Yes, honey. Oh, poor Hendrix. He wants to come, but then he gets scared because he's worried about lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Come on, honey. Come on, sweetie. Um, but yeah, so back to my holy notes. Um, so yeah, pridefulness is the true pandemic, you guys. That is not to undermine COVID because I know it's real. I know that people are dying. I had it, as you know, but we got to break our pridefulness down, down. Because, I mean, look at his holy creation. Look. Look at his holy creation. I mean, the Lord is doing stuff. There you are, baby. Come on, honey. Come on. We want you to join us, my little munchkin, my little space kitty. He'll tag along. He just gets nervous. But um, being able to humble myself and just say, okay, um, clearly... I was made for a reason. Clearly, everybody's unique. Peace of Christ. Clearly, everybody's made unique in the image of God. Clearly, everybody has, you know, a individual personality. So, I have been... <coughs> that car needs a smog check. Clearly... Oh, please, God. Get me out of here. Oh, Oh, I hate that smell. <sighs> okay. Clearly, each and every one of us, hi, peace of Christ, is made in God's image. And so we are unique, you guys, and we are here and we are placed on this earth to serve and love our Lord and to love, love Jesus and to love Christ and to know that we're holy, to know that we are um, supernatural beings. I mean, we're supernatural beings. Think about it. You're walking on a planet. I mean, not to get too, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't even know what the word is. I can't think of it right now, but you know, uh, not to get too weird, but it's like, we're walking on a planet. You are a human being. You came out of your mother's womb. You can breathe and talk. And you have a heart beating inside your chest. And you're in outer space. Okay, so if you don't think life is a miracle, then uh, you're not fully awakened. Because even Albert Einstein said you either live with, you know, either everything is a miracle or nothing's a miracle, guys. Everything. Everything's a miracle. Oh, somebody's playing the piano. Oh, it's Janice. Janice, is, Janice plays the piano. She's such a sweetheart. She's one of my neighbors. Um, okay, so uh, next holy note here. So, okay. I'm starting not to fear death as much, which is really exciting because as you know, I have a little fear of death. A uh, major, major disability, you know, debilitating, paralyzing fear of death, actually. But it has gotten so much better. And I want to praise God for that. That is a PTL. That is a, a PTR. No. Praise report. Um, yeah. But how do you... Yeah. Somebody, somebody abbreviated it. I don't know how they did it. 
um, PR, praise report. Okay. Um, but I read something and I want to read it to you guys. Don't let us die a thousand times when we only need to die once. So I think I read that once before on here, but it's like, you know, a person who's tortured is somebody who just constantly thinks about death because they're never really living. So I just don't want to be that person. And I thank you in advance, Lord, for healing me of that. Hi, Janice. Hi, I'm shooting my YouTube channel. Oh, so you. I want to turn it around so they can meet you. Would you just wave? Okay. That's Janice. <laughs> Sweet Janice. Christmas pajamas. In her Christmas pajamas. That's the way we do things on California preaching. We are totally relaxed. God bless you. You too. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to die a thousand times before I actually die. It's just so stupid. It's just such a waste of time. Um, and remember, the devil's committed to your spiritual suicide. So, you know, for me today, I am going to do everything in my power. I prayed this morning with Clarissa, and we both just said... Lord, we submit to you. We know that we are put on this planet for one reason and one reason alone, and that's to know you and love you and serve you and to uh, be in a place of gratitude and rejoicing. I mean, you know, when life throws us things that are super, super difficult, it's challenging to be in that place. It's challenging to be in that place of gratitude and, you know, being in a place where we're like, yeah, life is, you know, digging it. You know, I'm just loving this life thing. Like, no, it's, it doesn't feel that way when, you know, you can't pay your rent or your car breaks down or your, you know, son or daughter is diagnosed with a disease or you're diagnosed with a disease or, you know, you have, um, you know, terrible familial complex issues going on and you're in pain. It's, it's rough. Life is rough. And, um, we have the Lord though, to, to fill, to, to fill, we got to fill ourselves up, fill that, recharge that spiritual battery today. You guys go to the well. Come on, baby. No, don't cry. He's crying. He cries like a little baby. Um, let's fill ourselves with the living water today. The Lord said, anybody who comes to me will not thirst again, will not thirst again. You know, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that I need to step it up in my Christian walk. I've got to step it up because do I believe it or do I not? Jesus said, whoever comes to my well and drinks of this water, this eternal water, living water, will never thirst again. Oh, isn't that just like so relaxing, so comforting, so promising, so comforting, so, I don't know, just gives me peace. It just gives me room to breathe. I just feel like I can breathe. Okay, my next holy note is um, not believing in God is taking an even bigger leap of faith than believing in God. Not believing in God is taking an even bigger leap of faith than believing in God. And that gets back to, I mean, come on. It says in the Bible, we have no excuse. We have no excuse not to believe in God. Look around you. Look inside your body, the way it's wired. Look at the magnificent machine of the human body. Are you going to tell me there's no God when you have a liver and a pancreas and, and you have a heart and you have a spleen and you have ears and eyes? And I mean, we lose sight of this because the miracle is so broad and expansive and huge and beyond understanding that we lose perspective. Are you going on a kitty hike? Like, where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? I'd like to know. That is a very deep valley. I would rather my kitty not 
enter the deep valley. Hendrix, come on. Let's go. Turn it around, baby. Come on. Let's go. Here, get it, 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 get it. Yeah. Don't get lost in the valley, please. So, um, that's just encouraging for me today to just remind myself that, you know, the miracles are, are so broad and so supernatural that we can't even, I mean, if we really were attuned and awakened to how much of a miracle life is, I think we'd all be unable to function actually, if we were all completely aligned with uh, the miracles that surround us and awakened to them, I think that we would all just be so blown away and mi mind blown that we wouldn't even be able to function. So I think that's why God puts a veil there because how would we be able to function if we were really to take it all in? I remember once I was on the beach, this was when I was about 13. I was on the beach and I was with all my girlfriends, you know, all greased up in my little bikini at Santa Monica beach and and a, and a whole flock of birds flew over our head and I just looked up and I had this realization of how miraculous it was that there are these creatures that are in the sky with wings and eyes and a brain inside their head. Like there's a brain flying in the sky right now. It was so weird. I was like, Oh my goodness, like there are creatures that actually fly above our heads that are living and they are in outer space and so am I. <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm on a NASA trip right now, but I'm completely serious and I remember all my wiring in my brain crosswired and I had like a like like my brain exploded. And I was just like, and I literally put my face in my hands. And my friends were like, are you okay? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, let's go catch a wave. Like I just tried to change the subject because how was I going to explain the moment I had just had to my friends? It was just such a powerful, spiritual, uh, mind bending moment. I don't know if that ever has happened to anybody else on this channel. If I'm not alone, please let me know. And please subscribe <laughs> to my wacky, amazing California preaching that um, is doing so, so well. Bye, Janice. Bye. God bless you. Oh, you know, Hendrix comes on almost every walk. Well, at least during the day. Yeah, he's such a sweetheart. No, and now look, Pokey wants to play with Coda. Oh, Pokey, you can't play with Coda today. Um, come on, Pokey. Bye. Um, so, um, yeah, so not believing in God is taking an even bigger leap of faith than believing in God. So if you're sitting there going, mm, I don't know, you know, yeah, this whole Jesus thing. Yeah, I just don't know if that's for me. I don't know. Trust me. Trust me. Give Jesus a chance, okay? Give Jesus a chance. Give him a chance to minister to you, to work in your life, because he does do open heart surgery. He is the greatest physician that ever walked the earth, and he is now seated at the right hand of God. Whether you believe it or not, I promise you that's where he is. He's seated at the right hand of God, and he has finished his work. He finished his work, which is why he's resting. I can't blame him. <laughs> he's sitting there. And he did some mighty work. He saved humanity from their, um, you know, their, uh, their, uh, uh, oh my gosh, my words, my COVID brain. I did have COVID, you guys, so you have to give me grace here, okay? You have to give me some grace. Um, from their doom, ultimate, no way of getting out of it, doom. And, um, and if you want to learn more about that, read the Bible. It is authored by somebody named God. Okay. So I would just recommend that you read that book. There's a reason why it's the top selling book of all time. And um, peace of Christ. Come on, kitty. 
and God loves you. I struggle with believing that God loves me. I really, really do. And I know that that all comes from, stems from my, I can't say it again. It's just so annoying and I'm so sorry, but like, this is my story. Okay. It's my story. I have deep, deep, deep abandonment issues. And I, and it's hard for me to wrap my head around the idea of being loved, supremely loved by my father, but I am, I am supremely loved by my father. And last but not least, I'm going to wrap this up, but you know, for all you dog lovers out there, you know that when you come home and your dog is just wagging its tail and you know, it's crying and it's just like shaking its little head and it's all excitable. And it's doing that because that dog is expressing pure and utter unadulterated love for you. And if your dog, your dog, which is God spelled backwards, which is very interesting. By the way, it was Santa mixed up is Satan, which if you didn't figure that out, how crazy is that? And Santa hijacked Christmas. Oh gosh. Listen, I'm not trying to be you know, a party pooper here. I told the kids when they were like six and seven that there was no Santa. Okay, judge, everyone's going to say you're a horrible human being. But I, you know, God really put it on my heart that I wasn't to lie to them about it. And <laughs> I told Billy that I told him there was no Santa and he literally didn't talk to me for like three days. But Billy didn't find out that there was no Santa till he was like 15. Could you imagine believing in Santa Claus when you're 15? I mean, what world did he live in? What, what, and then when he found out, his brothers told him he like burst out into tears. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. But anyway, when that dog is wagging its tail and is loving you and is kissing you and is adoring you and it's just like... There is no other moment, no greater happiness than to see your face. That's how God feels about us. But like on crack times 25 trillion, if you could imagine that. And every day that we get closer to coming home to the Lord, he's wagging his tail even harder. He's wagging his tail even harder. He can't wait to be back with us and for us especially to be back with him in his glory and in his perfection and in his promise and in his paradise. And I'm believing in that today. I'm believing on that today. I'm resting in that today. And I pray that you will rest in your Lord today and in God and that you will have a spirit-filled day. Make it a super spirity day. And um, yeah, I just send all of you my love, peace of Christ, signing out. God's not looking for a new definition of Christianity. I'm sorry, the world is not waiting for a new definition of Christianity. It's waiting for a new... <laughs> okay, we're just friends. Let's all be friends. Um, a new definition of Christianity it's waiting for a new, oh Lord, help me, demonstration of Christianity. <laughs> it's not waiting for, the world is not waiting. Here we go. The world is not waiting for a new definition of Christianity. It's waiting for a new demonstration of Christianity. So let's bring it, guys. Love people to the cross. God bless you. Amen. Peace of Christ.